questions whenever you are, Nate. Okay. All right. Um, Miss, uh, um, it'd be great if you would um, tell us sort of like uh, sort of your background and like where you came from and like what you wanted to do in high school and, and yeah. how you ended up where you were at. So I grew up in Alamance County. I went uh, in the, the Burlington Graham snow camp area. I, uh, I went to Southern Alamance High School and, um, you know, I did a lot of different things. I explored a lot of different aspects of, of you know, my talents. And, you know, I, I played five sports, uh, you know, football, basketball, baseball, track, indoor track. Um, you know, I was part of performing arts. I did theater and music and, uh, and, and ballet. Um, you know, I, I uh, wrote for the school newspaper. Um, you know, I did a lot of different things uh, just to kind of figure out who I was and what my career path uh, was going to kind of be. The one thing that's been constant in that through my whole uh, my whole kind of upbringing is teaching and, and kind of instructing and, and um, uh, coaching. So that's always been constant. So even when I was in high school, I was coaching younger kids. I was tutoring little younger kids in, in math and science. And, um, and so that's always been something that's been uh, very close to my heart and something that I enjoy. So, it, um, so over the years, uh, I uh, went to college uh, on a football scholarship. Um, and so during that time, um, you know, I studied, uh, I, you know, my original major was gonna be pre-med. Uh, I decided not to go that route and I ended up becoming an econ major. So I have a degree in economics and also um, I have a second degree in political science. Um, and that kind of translated because this past November, I just got elected to my first term in High Point City Council. Um, oh, wow. So, Congratulations. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. So um, so I have a you know, pretty varied background. Um, but one thing that's always you know, uh, I kind of stayed in the same vein of training and development. So um, over the years, um, I found myself working in manufacturing uh, on, on the business side. Uh, but one thing that I always came back to was the training and development of, of people. So uh, for the past 20 plus years uh, in operations and um, continuous improvement, engineering, and now eight human resources, I've kind of led training and development. So, uh, you know, how you are doing, how you are a teacher and you're an instructor and you're an educator, I've kind of done the same thing in my career, um, just on the, the, the private industry side. Um, for, the, for the past 10 years, I've worked internationally. Um, before I came to Edgar, I worked for IKEA. So you guys, are, I know guys are familiar with IKEA. I worked for their manufacturing uh, arm for the past uh, five or six years uh, before coming to Edgar. You know, I've had a chance to travel to about 30 different countries in the last five or six years, uh, everywhere from Russia to Sweden. Uh, and so uh, it's, it's taken me, uh, business has taken me, you know, to some pretty amazing places. Uh, and that's what I do for Edgar. So for Edgar, I design all of our training programs. I do all of our internal development of our employees. So when it comes to, um, you know, where there's leadership development or where there's something like um, developing an AutoCAD um, course for our, some of our engineers, uh, I'm responsible for putting all that together and making sure that our people get what they need to be the best at their jobs. So that's just kind of a, you know, brief synopsis of who I am and how I, uh, ended up here uh, at Edgar and Lexington. That's a great story. I I I, I had no idea that you'd done yeah. all that. I mean, nothing, yeah. nothing again. I mean, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. impressive. Uh, well, thank you, thank you. Yeah, thank uh, you. and I had no idea you were now a city council member. So that's yeah, cool. man. I just uh, you know, I I got down to like the last day of filing, um, and my wife said, "Are you sure you want to do this?" And I said, "Not really." Uh, but I went in and, uh, you know, filed to run and ended up winning the, winning the race. And, uh, I'm coming up on the end of the first year of my, my term. So it's, uh, it's been pretty interesting. A lot of, 
a lot of work to do, but you know, I've, I've been in and around politics for most of my life, uh, but mostly in the background working on campaigns and doing policy analysis and writing speeches. But uh, you know, this was the, this was the, you know, time I stepped, I stepped and put my hat in the ring this time. So it was uh, pretty exciting. Very cool. Very cool. We have a politician and a corporate trainer today. That's well, you know, you know, you gotta, you, gotta, you know, you gotta be more than one thing in this world, in this life. That's right. That's right. Yeah. All right. Um, does anybody have any questions so far? No. No. Okay. Uh, um, so, who, so who am I talking to this morning? I, I've introduced myself, uh, but you know, I know Mr. Tanjo, but I don't know who else is here. Would you like to go ahead and introduce yourselves? Uh, just go ahead and unmute and introduce yourselves. Go ahead and start if you want to, David. Okay, my name is David Prock. I am 16 years old and I go to Lexington Senior High. Um, I was born in Lexington, and I would love to be a multi-billionaire. Oh, now that's a great goal. That, you know, that's, you know, oftentimes when people say what they want to do, it's always a job. Like, it's always a specific thing. Like, I want to be a doctor or a surgeon. I want to be a pro football player. Like, there's and to to set a goal like that, that means that you're leaving yourself multiple ways to get there. You know what I'm saying? So you're not just you're not putting yourself in a box and saying that the only that you got to do it this way. So when you set a broad goal like that, you leave yourself many pathways to get there. So that's that's uh, that's that's pretty good, David. Deontay, would you like to introduce yourself? He may not have a microphone. Uh, okay. How about okay. Jamira? Deontay, if you if you have a question, you can put it in the chat, buddy. My name is Jamira, and I'm from Lexington. I go to Lexington Senior High School, and I'm in ninth grade, and I'm 14 years old. Okay. Okay. So, what is your, what is your um, favorite subject, Jamira? Oh, uh, math. Oh, okay, good, good. Um, you know, math is one of the things that we look for when we're looking for good people to recruit. Uh, you know, we have very technical jobs here. We have engineers, we have technicians, um, and math is a big part of that. So if you're good at math, the opportunity for you one day to possibly um, be an engineer here or something like that at, uh, at Edgar is, is good. So uh, keep studying math, keep doing well. And, um, you know, the future is bright for people who have uh, um, high abilities in STEM. So science, uh, technology, engineering, math. Um, so a lot of that is, a, is, is what the careers uh, are looking for today, what a lot of employers are looking for. And um, if, you know, you want to start a business, I know David said he wants to be a multi-billionaire, um, but if you want to start your own business, those are the, the tech sector is a, is a great um, place where math and science skills uh, can come into play. Um, you know, you know, a lot of our, our great uh, uh, tech sector jobs, things that you guys love, like Snapchat and, um, and TikTok are all designed by people who were pretty good in science and math. So um, just keep working hard in those areas. Zion, would you like to? My name is Zion. I'm 14 and I'm ninth grade and I go to Lexington Senior High School. Okay, Zion, what about you? What is uh, what are you, what are you, what are your likes? What do you like to do? Uh, well, I want you to be a pediatric nurse. Okay, okay. Well, you know that's uh, that's that's a field, and I'm just assuming that you're a, you're a young man, lady. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Zion. Uh, almost every person that I know named Zion is a boy. So um, that's why I had to, I, I didn't mean to stereotype. 
Oh, but no, pediatric nurse, uh, pediatric nursing is, uh, is a, is a hot field. Healthcare over the next, um, five years, um, will be about seven or eight billion dollars worth of our economy. So if you look at what, um, our, we spend the most on, uh, in, in government, it's healthcare. If we, we look at the fact that, you know, our population is growing, um, people are living longer, um, healthcare is a, is a big thing. So, um, you know, anytime you have what's called a, a, a baby boom, where you have a period of time where a lot of babies are born uh, in, a, in, a, in a short span, it happened in the 19, uh, late 1940s, uh, to like the 19, late 1950s, um, where our population doubled in, uh, for a while, um, there's going to be a need for nurses. I mean, there's going to be more people than the ability of uh, the healthcare system to, to, to service them. So um, opportunities are there. Opportunities are there. Um, so yeah, just keep studying math, keep studying science. Um, you know, a lot of that also uh, encompasses like some things, soft skills. You need to be, um, you need to have soft skills and that's how to interact with people, how to, to, to have empathy. Those things are a big thing, uh, for nurses. I, you know, I have a lot of, uh, healthcare professionals in my family and, um, you know, they, they, they love what they do. All right. Uh, and you definitely need to tune in next week at 12 o'clock because we have a PA from Novant Health coming in. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. So, um, and I'm going to mess up this name, uh, and please correct me. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, Fabi, would you, uh, would you like to introduce yourself? No, it's Fabi. But my name is Fabi. We can't really hear you. Yet. You can't hear me? A little bit better. A little bit better. My name is Fabi, and I want to be a vet when I get older. A, a, a vet? Did you say like a veterinarian? Yes. Okay, yeah. So still healthcare, just, you know, animals. Um, but, um, I, you know, it's it's really the same thing. I mean, it's, it's a lot of study and... Um, you know, a lot of focus in math, but the great thing about it is, is that, um, you know, I think locally we have some pretty good veterinarian, um, um, educational, uh, resources. I think NC state has a, a great vet program. Um, so, you know, there's, uh, there's an opportunity at UNC Chapel Hill, I think has a great veterinarian, pr uh, uh, um, program. And I think even UNC Charlotte, which is, uh, probably a little closer, uh, than, than the other two, but, um, but that's, you know, that's awesome. Our, our, our animal friends need healthcare just like we do. So, um, what, what grade are you in? Bobby, can you hear me? Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, maybe Get not. It. Well, uh, yeah, well, you never know whenever, a lot of times we have ideas uh, that yeah. in a direction we're going to go and uh, yeah, absolutely. End up in places we never knew. So uh, absolutely. Like I, you know, I, like I said, I was uh, thinking of being pre-med when I was, um, when I was there, I even uh, took the LSAT to go to law school. Um, oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, so yeah, I had, a, I had applied to law school. Um, you know, and uh, got accepted to law school and decided not to do that. Um, so there's a lot of, you know, there's a lot of chances for you to, to change direction and change uh, often depending on what it, what happens. And, you know, I never would have thought I would end up, you know, finding myself, uh, you know, working in manufacturing. It wasn't, wasn't my plan, but, uh, you know, um, just circumstances I did. And I've I actually been in, manu I've been in manufacturing now uh production uh for about 25 years and it's uh it's been really good even though uh manufacturing has uh been up and down um you know the some of the career paths have been uh, you know pretty stable and, and there's been growth so um 
but yeah, that's that's Miss Tanja was absolutely right. I mean, there's going to be chances for you to grow and change and figure it out, especially as young as some of you guys are. Uh, well, um, with that being said, can you tell us a little bit more about Edgar? And uh, and one thing that I know we're interested in: how did Edgar um, choose Lexington, this area? Yeah. So, so Egger is a, an Austrian company. So if you look on the map and you see Germany, like Austria is really close to Germany. So it's European. Um, so Austria, it was started by uh, Mr. Fritz Egger Sr. Uh, 50 years ago from one single sawmill. So um, his, um, his love for the environment led him to look at wood um, and, and how we use wood um, as a natural resource. And he wanted to save it as much as possible. You know, so he looked at all the things that most people would consider waste, um, sawdust, shavings, um, you know, wood that uh, didn't fit the, the model for uh, to build houses or, or buildings. And he decided to take all those things that people consider waste and turn it into a usable product. So what he did was he, he took all those things and he combined them into what's called particle board. So particle board is a building product that you find in almost any, any, um, anything that you, any place that you go, you find it. Um, some of the desks that you sit at, some of the furniture that you, um, that you use in your homes, uh, some of the walls of, of buildings that you take classes in, those things are all built with uh, particle board. It's a super strong structure. Um, it has, uh, it's really bendable and it's, um, you know, durable over time and against the elements. And so um, Edgar decide, Mr. Edgar decided to take all the waste um, to keep it from, uh, you know, you know, going into a landfill or going into the to the to the rivers and streams and pollution, and he decided to combine that into a, a new into a product. And so now, uh, 50 years later, uh, from that one single sawmill, Mr. Egger uh, uh, Wood Products is now a global company. So when uh, David was talking about coming a becoming a multi billionaire, um, Mr. Egger was able to take one single sawmill and turn it into a global company that does about six billion dollars a year uh, in revenue. So uh, Egger Lexington is the 20th um, Egger site. So we have uh, sites in Germany, Russia, Poland, Turkey, Romania, um, Scotland, uh, England, uh, Argentina, and now the U.S. and now here in Lexington. So we have sales offices in China, Australia. So pretty much everywhere on the planet, um, we have a presence as a company. Uh, you know, I was fortunate uh, to take a tour last last spring. Uh, I started off in the U.K. in England. I went over to Scotland. I uh, spent a couple of days in Germany and Austria, and then uh, I come home. I came home, and before. Uh, COVID hit, I was going to go to Argentina uh, to, to their site. So, um, you know, we're, we're everywhere and the company is growing. So more than likely here, the next five to 10 years, uh, Edgar will open up a new site in America. So it's, uh, it's a growing company. We have great career opportunities here, everything from human resources to engineering to sales and marketing. Um, you know, we have transportation and logistics, finance, accounting, um, legal, uh, IT. So we have some great career opportunities uh, for pretty much everything that may interest you uh, from an academic standpoint that you could that you could possibly study. Does anybody have any questions so far? Yes, I do. I'm yes. a sub teacher. My name is Mary Adderholt. And I wanted to know how did you choose Lexington or how mm. did the company choose Lexington? Well, that, that is a great question. Um, we chose Lexington for a lot of reasons. And one of the major reasons, uh, hold, hold on one second. 
Oh, one second. Yeah. Okay, well, I definitely yeah. have <laughs> uh, We chose Lexington for, for a major, uh, for a lot of reasons. Um, one of the reasons is the proximity to raw materials. Uh, one of the things that we use, um, of course, is wood. And so because, you know, we have within 150 kilometers of, of the site, a lot of wooded areas for us where we can um, uh, source raw materials, um, it, was, it was advantageous. Uh, also, from a transportation and logistics standpoint, we have uh, two major airports. We have Charlotte Douglas in, uh, in Charlotte, and we have PTI right here in, in Greensboro, and then we're right here on uh, major highways. So for us moving product and getting uh, things and people from, from place to place, it was really good. And finally, most importantly, um, Lexington has a history of um, educated workforce and people who are uh, educated um, and have experience in manufacturing. So the biggest driver uh, was the people. Uh, for us to be able to find workers who could easily um, adapt to our, our system, learn what we do here, uh, and, and be efficient in producing our product. So it was an educated workforce, it was access to raw materials, and it was um, uh, centrally located uh, right in between uh, a lot of areas where we can easily transport. Thank you very much. Oh, you're welcome. Any other questions so far? But at some point, uh, and I don't know if this is a good time or not, but uh, I'd like for you to discuss the uh, apprenticeship opportunities with uh, Edgar at some point. Absolutely. Um, so for those of you who are not familiar with uh, what apprenticeships are, so apprenticeships are an opportunity okay. for us to, we, when we talk about workforce development, when we talk about finding uh, candidates to work in our, our company, um, sometimes we, we look for people with experience, um, but if we can't find those, then we develop them. So what the apprenticeship does is it gives us an opportunity to find young talent, very smart people, uh, and train them and also to educate them. So what the apprenticeship does is we actually pay for you to go to college uh, to earn your degree while you actually work for us and earn money while doing it. So the benefit of that is if you want to be an engineer, if you want to be, um, you know, be a production uh, technician, all the things that we do, and we're actually developing internships in other areas like marketing, finance. So even if you're not interested in, in the manufacturing side of it, uh, we'll have opportunities there in the future. Um, we'll, bring, we'll actually bring you in, you'll become an employee of the company, and then while you're actually working here, gaining experience, we will pay for you to go to school. So, uh, you know, unlike a lot of people, you will graduate with no college debt, you'll have a chance to earn money, um, build savings, uh, and you also have a chance to earn seniority with the company. So the apprenticeship, op the print the apprenticeship is a very um, um, advantageous uh, opportunity for young people to earn work experience. Because let me tell you, when you graduate college, if you go straight to college after after uh, high school, many of you will. Um, the one things that one thing that employers will be looking for outside of education is work experience. So a lot of times what happens is that you have education, but you don't have work experience or you have work experience, but you don't have education. So um, the apprenticeship gives you both simultaneously. So while you're working, you're, you're while you're working and gaining that experience, you're also going to school full time. Now, it's possible to do that uh, at a four year university. Uh, but it's it's much more difficult uh, to to manage uh, a four year university with uh, a work schedule. So uh, it's a great opportunity for young people to to earn experience, to gain uh, insight to the company. Um, you know, you get a chance to see how the entire company works. So you know, you get a chance to see you know the sourcing of the raw materials. You get a chance to see finance and sales. You get a chance to see product design. You get a chance to see sales and marketing and how we um, 
speak to our customers and speak to uh, the market. So you get a chance to see all of that right here within the company while we're paying for you to go to school. So it's it's a great it's a great uh, program. Wow. So you, you're saying like it's not like manufacturing like um, the old furniture factories where you sat in one place all day and just well, you were on a saw. Yeah, so so the great thing about the what we have right now um, in terms of um, in, uh, apprenticeships is we have our electrical engineering uh, apprenticeship and we have our mechanical engineering apprenticeship. So these are people that make our plant run. So you get a chance to to be all over the all over the factory um, working on advanced. Uh, machinery. So you're never stuck in one place and you're never really doing anything every day. Um, you know, because they're, they're, you know, if uh, we have, you know, because of the, 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 the major nature of our, uh, um, um, of our manufacturing process, we have, you know, gigantic equipment, tons and tons of equipment, um, you know, computers, uh, all kinds of things that need servicing all the time. So you never are stuck in the same thing every day. You know, one day you could be, you know, machining or welding a new part. The next day you could be working, um, installing a, a, a computer system. So it's, it's a varied opportunity. And so for these particular things, you're, it's, it's exciting every day because you never know what you're going to come into. I wish I'd had that opportunity whenever I was that age. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Yeah. Now, uh, you mentioned all the traveling you've done, what, I think 30 mm -hmm. countries. Uh, is mm -hmm. um, traveling, is that common for Egger employees? Yeah, we, uh, we actually have um, right now uh, a lot of people to help us get started because we're, you know, a brand new factory. We have people coming in all the time. Um, uh, you know, COVID has actually, COVID has made things a little more difficult, obviously, but, um, you know, we go back and forth all the time. We do... Um, uh, exchange programs where we have some of our um, uh, technicians who will go to other factories and other factories will send technicians here. Um, you know, the, when we got started, um, I had two groups of, um, of trainees that one group went to Poland uh, to work in their factory to learn and the other group went to the UK to work. Um, and they from here and we sent them there. We paid for their, their, their travel, their flight, um, uh, hotel, everything. And so we they went there on the business trip uh, for a couple of weeks. Unfortunately, we had to bring them home when when uh, when COVID started to, to outbreak. Uh, but that's always a possibility um, when it comes to us sharing knowledge with our our sister plants. Very interesting. Uh, uh, Fabi had a question and uh, yeah. about, uh, so this is a job that while you study. Uh, yes. Yeah. Yes. You get paid. So, yes. You so, yeah, so you actually, you, you actually are a full-time employee as well as a full-time student. Um, but the way we do it is we structure your study so that you're only going to school one day a week. So you're at school one day a week, and then you work um, with us doing practical training four days a week. So um, we pay you for the day that you're in school, and then the rest of the week, the, the, the curricula that you study in school, you come and you apply it here at our factory and our training center. So we have you know, a state-of-the-art uh, apprentice training center uh, with uh, great equipment that you can come in and, and work on anything from hydraulics to pneumatics, um, uh, you know, milling lathes, uh, cutters. We're looking at getting a 3D printer. So uh, we have a state-of-the-art training center um, that we use for our uh, apprentices, and it's only for our apprentices. No one else can be in there. So it's uh, you guys get a chance to have um, you know all the time to yourself. We have a, we have a group of instructors. Uh, that have years and years of experience in electrical engineering and, and mechanics, um, and they're dedicated solely to, to, to seeing after the apprentices. Anyone have any questions so far? 
I see Mr. Butts is on here. I know he probably has some. <laughs> Uh, Sydney asked, can you be majoring in anything and still do the job? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, um, like I was telling Mr. Tom earlier, you know, I've, my degree is not in engineering. My degree is in economics. So, um, you know, I, and I work in manufacturing. Uh, so you can, even if you don't, um, the great thing about this is that we have internal training. Um, for those of you who were not here when, uh, when I introduced myself, um, I manage um, and create most of our training and development programs here. So if you come in and you have an aptitude for the job, even if your studies have not been uh, in something that is directly relevant to what we do, um, we will definitely train you if you have the ability to learn and pick this up. Uh, this is a pretty technical, technical job. So if you can understand, if you have a background, if you've done well in science and math or uh, you have an aptitude for mechanics, um, then everything else we can add to you. Um, so, you know, we take pride in developing our people. Um, you know, we have, um, you guys are familiar with Moodle and Blackboard. Uh, and so a lot of the uh, online learning, uh, I think, what is it, uh, Khan Academy, there's a lot of different um, online learning management systems. So I have one here that I'm the manager of, that, I, that I'm the director of. And so we have everything in, in our learning management system from um, um, how to be better, had better presentation skills to language learning. So if you wanna learn German, uh, we have courses for you to be able to take to learn to up your German skills since we are, are a German company. Um, so we, we do everything that we can to make sure that our employees are prepared to do the job at a high level. Very interesting. Uh, we've also had, Ms. Superling had a question. Would you like to ask yeah. Ms. Superling? Well, I'm just curious because I've actually had a student today, one of my seniors, I teach the, um, English as a second language, but one of my seniors mm -hmm. was like, I need a job, I need a job, because anyway. So what's yeah. the process? Like what's the next step and how do I share this with my kids that like, who do I share it with? You know what I'm saying? Like, who's this? Yeah, so, so, so the opportunity, so if you, for general employment, you have to be at least 18. Okay. So for instance, if, um, uh, you know, your student didn't necessarily want to be in the apprentice program, but they wanted um, just a general uh, labor job. So, um, you know, we have uh, jobs like forklift drivers and, and machine operators and stuff like that. So. Um, you can you can essentially apply um, after 18. And I, I would suggest after graduation um, on any of the job boards. So uh, Indeed, uh, Glassdoor. You can actually go to um, Davidson uh, Works, the um, the workforce development here in town. Um, you can go to our website, egger.com, and look at uh, careers. So there's a bunch of different ways um, to to get on. Um, so, so if you, if he's looking to, uh, apply, um, soon, then that, those would be the ways to do it. What about the apprenticeship? Who's that for? So that's for grant. We, we, our target audience is generally graduating seniors. So we're going to start recruiting for that. We just signed on our class, uh, our graduating class. We, it's a four year program. So every, um, year we recruit a new class, just like, um, universities. So if he wanted to be part of the uh, apprentice program, the recruiting process will start in January. Applications okay. will open then. And so at that point, we'll actually come uh, and talk to, to all of you in your senior classes to let them know about the process of, of possibly becoming an apprentice. Okay, perfect. Thank you. So you said in January, we're going to start the process again? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So right now, uh, if you guys want to, if you guys want to, you can go to Facebook and, and follow the DDAC um, uh, Facebook page and you'll start, you'll see all the things um, that we're currently doing, um, things by our, our current apprentices. Uh, you can also go to YouTube and search DDAC and we have a YouTube channel there. We'll be uploading videos of some of the activities that our apprentices will be doing. Um, so that you guys can, can get a chance to see 
um, all the things that, that go on in the apprentice program. We will definitely have to check that out. We might. Yeah. Uh, that sounds interesting. I didn't realize y'all had a Facebook and a YouTube. Yeah, we, we're, we're actually, we just launched our, our social media. We'll soon have our, um, we'll have our Facebook. We have a Facebook page up, our YouTube up. Uh, our Instagram will be up soon. And then all of those will be embedded on our website uh, when we get done with our uh, website design uh, so that you guys can, can just link directly from our website. But um, any any information um, right now, you can go, you can see the companies involved in the DDAC on the web website, and that's ddac.tech. So if you guys want to go there, uh, you can you can go and check us out. Because it's just not Edgar. It, the opportunity is just not at Edgar. There are five other companies where you can possibly get on great companies, great opportunities. Um, so so that's uh, that's the consortia of the DDAC. Great. We're going to send that out to all our students too, so they can have awesome. access to that. Awesome. Awesome. I think that's awesome. So I yeah, like, 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 like on, like on Facebook and subscribe on, uh, on YouTube. I wanted to ask how large is the workforce of Edgar? In Lex okay. So Lexington for, um, for our first phase is going to be three phases here. Um, constructed. We just finished phase one. Um, and we are right now about 300 people. Um, uh, we're going to get up to about 440. Uh, and over the next, uh, you know, five to so years, it's probably going to be close to 800. Thank you very much. Well, you're welcome. And again, you're going to have um, two different uh, types of apprenticeship uh, cohorts this year. Exactly. Yeah, so we're gonna have we're gonna have actually three. So um, we're gonna we're, we're gonna be adding um, production operator apprenticeship. Now it'll be a, it'll be structured a little differently than our engineering uh, apprenticeship, uh, but we'll offer that as an opportunity for those who want to work in our production environment. Uh, the you'll you'll still go to school. We'll still pay you, um, pay for your education, pay for your salary, uh, but you'll work in our uh, production operation, our pr production control room. So it'll be a little different. So that the details of that uh, and what that curricula will be, will look like will be released here in the next couple of weeks. Okay, awesome. So you actually so you actually have an opportunity uh, that increases the number of opportunities for apprenticeships uh, because normally um, you know we take eight to ten apprentices uh, every year. But because of the addition of our apprenticeship, uh, production apprenticeship, we're going to take more. So we'll take 12 apprentices this year. So the, so you know, it's it's not guaranteed that you're going to get in, but you know, you definitely don't get in if you don't apply. So um, you know, there's 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 going to be uh, 12 opportunities at Edgar, but then all the other companies will have opportunities as well uh, for those. So if you if you're not selected by Edgar, there's still an opportunity for you to get on with one of the other companies which are equally as great. That's awesome. All right, does, um, want to be respectful of your time, Mr. Holmes. Uh, Absolutely. Does anybody else have any, any questions? That's a lot to take in. Yeah, it is. So um, anytime you guys uh, have any questions, please, uh, Ms. Tonzo has my email phone number. So um, give me a call. I, I'll be happy to spend some time with you. Oh, we'll be, we'll be definitely be contacting you again, I'm sure, especially as, as Jan when January is here. Yeah, yeah. We've got a lot of teachers here at Lexington that, that believe in that program, so I don't yeah. think it'll be hard recruiting a few applicants out of here. Good, good. We, we're looking for them. I wanted yeah. to ask one no, more Go ahead. Certainly. How many branches of Edgar are there all around the world? So we are number 20. Number so 20. We're we're the 20th uh, plant. So uh, the timeline for Edgar is pretty aggressive. Um, so it seems like almost every, they took a break uh, right around 1970 and it, they didn't start the next one until around 1980. But since 1980, almost every three to five years, they built a new plant. So we went from two plants in 1980 to 20 plants in uh, 2020. So they have really been aggressive. So uh, we're the we're the 20th site. We just built our 
sister plant in Poland. They just came online a year ago. Uh, and the year before that, we, we purchased uh, a site in Argentina. So uh, we're number 20. Thank you. You're welcome. Oh, I did have another question. Um, yeah. I, I think you mentioned the other day that you guys have started production. Is yes. Right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So a after two years of construction and thousands of people, uh, and having the most cranes in the state of North Carolina, we finally started production. So we're now actually producing product. Uh, so we're really happy about that. And so, um, you know, we're, we're already up and running. Um, we have two processes. Uh, one of them is our short cycle press, which um, is our value added process. And then we have our base uh, process, which are, is our raw board process. So that was the one that was, uh, that's the that's the driver of everything that we do uh, is our raw particle board chipboard uh, process, and we finally got that up and running, and so we're we're pretty excited about that. That's awesome. Hey, Mr. Holmes, how are you? Good. How are you doing? Good. Thanks for being with us today. Absolutely. Just hey, I, knew, I, knew, I know that voice. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Um, just have a quick question for you um, yeah. in your new apprenticeship class. Um, were mm -hmm. any from Lexington by chance? Um, yes, I think we had oh. one, uh, Tyler uh, Shantalangsi. Yes. I think, yes, okay. Tyler. Yeah, Thank Tyler. You. Yes, Tyler is uh, is one of ours now. He, uh, Wonderful. He, yeah, he came on board. Ty, he was, and uh, I was telling Mary, I was like, where where is all the Lexington people? We didn't get many applicants. And I came, I think I came to speak out there a you bunch came of to times. Speak. We bought kids to I the community bought, college. Yeah. We all had the day. Yeah, I was a little offended. Like I didn't, I'm like, <laughs> is my sales pitch not good? Like, am I is do I need to work on my presentation skills? Like, what's it going was, on? So, it was great. But you know what? You know, we've added Mr. Tondel to our team. And yeah. um, we're we're gonna we're gonna improve that. That that is well, definitely good. our goal. Well, we've Ty gotta get Tyler, our kids. Tyler is great. And so if I need to bring Tyler back to, to tell you guys about uh, his experience so far, I definitely will. Absolutely. Uh, but, but Tyler was uh, Tyler's a great apprentice. He's off to a great start here. Uh, he's doing well at school and he's also doing well um, in our, our training center. So, uh, yeah, so, we, so we'd love to see more applicants from Lexington. Absolutely. You're going to get them. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. That's great. Yeah. All right. Does anybody have anything else? We'll definitely have Mr. Holmes back. That's for sure. Absolutely. Guys, thank you for uh, allowing me to spend some time with you this morning. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, well, uh, we will uh, we will talk to you soon and you have a good weekend, sir. Thank you very much. All right. Very care, thank you. Good weekend. Bye.